Hi and welcome to this Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're going to look at the combine feature and how to use that to create a double sided mould as you can see in the top left hand corner. If you acquired a completed files please check the link in the description below and we'll jump straight into Fusion. So what we've got on the screen here is the final design that I created and what I did is I inserted this uh, chess piece as a derived part. So a derived part is something that basically is a model that's been created in another CAD program and has been in, uploaded or inserted into Fusion. So we're going to use this uh, design here or this file as a reference and I'm going to click on a new tab and I've saved this as a, a tutorial as the name. So the first thing to do is to locate that derived part, right click and insert that straight into Fusion. And I'm just going to rotate this around to the right orientation. Now you could, rather than using a derived part, if you watch my previous video of how to create a single sided mode, you could design this straight in Fusion, okay, and then follow the steps I'm going to go through afterwards. But I'm going to use this model here as a derived part. So I've rotated that and I'm going to click OK. So we're going to come into our reference model here and we're going to go back in time and the first thing I did was I basically created let's have a, look, a sketch or a box which is going to create the main body of the mold around there. So one thing to consider as well is when you're inserting your derived part is positioning the origin the planes. So as you can see here I've positioned my origin there and all the planes start from that bottom point okay which is central to this design here and I've done the same thing on mine when I inserted it as well so I'm going to draw this box it's 50 by 40 okay so if we go sketch on this plane here I'm just going to use uh, this corner rectangle for now I'm going to dimension this to be 40 and if we get that in the middle 20 dimension this as well Okay, so I press D for dimension, or you could click at the top, dimension this. And that one there, which adds like six millimeters. So again, the size of this box will depend on the size of the actual mode you're creating, so the size of this object. You need to leave enough room around this, okay? You don't want the, the sides of the mode to be too close to different features on this design. So there's enough space, okay, to go around there. So I'm gonna save that sketch. And I'm going to go to my home and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go extrude. So I've selected that and I'm going to go symmetric and I'm going to type in a distance to say 25 millimeters. Okay, either side. Now that looks quite big so if I drag this down actually I could probably get away with maybe saying 15 either side. I'm going to make sure that's a new body and click OK. So if we go back to here update this and let's have a look at what I did next so yeah I've extruded this okay symmetrical and yeah 15 either side so 13 total what I did next is I then removed okay that derived part from that main body to create basically like a cavity so if we come back into here what we're going to do is I'm just going to basically name this so just double click on that and name that mold and I've got the name of the chess piece there so that's fine so we're going to go up to combine the target body is the mold and I can select it there on the bodies okay the tool I'm going to be using is that derived part so I'm going to just go in under the part and let's have a look I'm going to choose the body itself that's it so you see it's co up selected. So you may, when you inserted that, you may need to have to come in and select the actual body, especially if it's a component. And what we're gonna do, I'm not gonna do join, okay? I want to do cut. And you can see it gives it a red outline there. I want to remove that chest piece from there to create that cavity. And I'm gonna, it automatically says I'm gonna keep that tool, okay? Because it's part of this derived part. If you've created that design from scratch in this 
part and then you've drawn the mold over the top okay you probably want to keep the tool so you can tick that and I've clicked OK. So at the moment if I hide that chest piece and if I do a cross section you'll see as this is dragged you see that cavity to start appear like so. So we've got a cavity in there now and if we come to this reference model what I did next is I, I created a split using the plane and then let's have a look what I did next after that. Okay, let's have a look. I then, aha, I created basically some pins or the start of a pin and a hole to locate the two halves together. So if we come into here and go to split, because I've drawn this, if we look at the origins, because I've drawn this, okay, symmetric, I can now use that plane there. So if I go under okay, here, you see I've got basically different planes. So we're going to select the body to split first, okay, then select the plane. So I'm going to hover over the planes and that one there. And as you can see, if I click OK, wait a few seconds for Fusion to catch up. And what we've got is we've got mode and mode 1. So I'm just going to type that one there and record that mode say front and we'll cut that mode say back so it's easy to recognize so what we've got is as you see a front and a back there if you spin that around there you go two halves now the reason I can't see the the derived part is because I've hidden that so if I wanted to I could obviously show where that's going to go uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide the front on this occasion. You could do hide the back, it doesn't matter which way around. I'm going to create a sketch on this surface here. And I'm going to create some pins to locate the two halves together. So, that, so therefore I'm not guessing where these two halves are going to line up. So I'm going to press C for circle. And I'm going to sketch a circle in this bottom corner. So I'm just going to go back and check my dimensions on here so we can get it so it matches up. And I've done that, okay, it's quite easy. So it's 5 mil, 5 mil, 5 mil. So let's have a look. So D for dimension. Let's dimension that five millimeters. Okay, from that bottom edge and from the side edge, like so. Like that. Now the pin location, the pin size, as well as the hole location and size will depend again on the size of this mold that you're doing. So you will have to bear that in mind when you're putting these dimensions in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one in each corner here. So we're going to select, let's see which way around I did this. Did I do the hole first? Let's have a look. Okay, so no, so I created a pin and then I added a slight chamfer on top. And the pin was five millimeters as well, just to keep the dimensions the same. So we go extrude, rotate this around. I'm going to type in 5mm and I'm going to go and add a little chamfer okay, along this edge. So 1mm might be too big, so maybe 0.5mm, there we go. And the reason I've added that little chamfer is then when that's going to go into the hole that I create, okay, it will make it easier to release if it's got a slight chamfer on it. So what I'm going to do now is copy those using okay, a pattern. So as you can see there, I've got one in that corner and I've patterned it okay, into each one of these. So let's have a look. It's going to go to rectangular pattern, features, the extrude and the chamfer, direction, I'm just going to choose the edge like so. I only want two, okay, like that. And then what I want to do is, uh, the extent is, yeah, so we'll do maybe spacing. I'm going to grab that and place that there like that. My second direction, I'm going to come along. Again, I don't want three going up there. And I'm going to start that to minus 40. 
Okay, so that's my pins that will appear once I click on OK. So as you can see, I've got those pins now. So what I'm going to do is turn back on the front and I'm going to subtract the back from the front and you'll see what happens. So I'm going to go combine target body. Okay, is the front. The tool is the back. And this time again, I want cut and I want to keep the tool and click OK. And then what we've got is if I turn the back on off, it's now subtracted those pins in the exact location, okay? But this time it's, it's subtracted them from the front. So now I've got a back and a front that will align. So what I'm gonna do next actually is I'm gonna hide the front again and I'm gonna click sketch and I'm gonna just click this surface or that work plane there, doesn't matter. What I'm gonna do now is if I turn off, okay, that, I don't have anywhere for the, the material, okay, which I'm gonna cast this out of to enter. So I'm gonna add this feature. So I'm gonna use the line tool. I'm gonna to draw a center line up here. Doesn't matter how far I'm gonna go down on, on, on my design that I've created. And again, I'm gonna go up there with a the line. I'm going to dimension this to say six or seven millimeters. This can all be adjusted if you need to adjust it later. I'm going to turn back on the front and I'm going to go solid, revolve. And what I'm going to do is the profile. So if you go under sketches, okay, and turn on that profile, let's have a look. Let's hide a few things, we're getting a bit crazy here. Let's uh, hide those bodies actually. Profile, let's just select that. So the axis, it'll probably come up with a warning maybe now because I've got the bodies hidden. There you go. So I just did that to make it easy to select and we want it to cut, but we want it to cut, okay, 360. So do a full cut and we want it to cut objects to cut. If we just click on that little arrow there, we do want it to cut both parts in the mode and click okay. All right, then if we turn these off, you can see what we've got now like that. All right, so basically, We've got the front part of the mode, the back part of the mode. We've got pins in each of the corners. Plus, okay, we've got this uh, sort of area where we can actually pour, okay, the materials into it. So if it's going to be pewter, for example, we could pour that in the top. Like so. So what I'm going to do now, actually, is I'm just going to hide both of those. And I'm going to go into sketches again. And we're just going to turn that one back on. And I'm just going to add a little feature here just to show you what it would look like once it's cast. So I'm going to go Revolve. I'm going to select that axis. Okay, Revolve that. And we're going to click on Join and click OK. And what we've got now is if we hide the sketch. Okay, that's what it would actually look like. Okay. Uh, as a cast piece and of course you'd have to cut this top bit off and then you'd have to um, round it off. Now because that's a derived part this is a separate body but you can see there what it would look like with okay if we turn that one on all right with the actual okay that section on it once it's cast and then what we can then do is we can if we hide say these okay we can easily right click on that and say save it as an STL and then that can then be imported into say if we've got any other CAM software if we wanted to say router that out okay or if we wanted to 3D print it we can save it as an STL and export that for 3D printing. And what I'll do in a future video is I'll go through how you can also use the manufacturing elements in Fusion to actually do the tool paths okay to create this design as well thanks for watching and if you found this content helpful please click like and subscribe and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description i'll see you on the next one